Okay, so I got my new solar node up here in Washington State. I've got it pointed generally towards the city. And I've already done a few tests and I'm getting uh, about, depending on where I'm at, about an extra mile of range compared to my one that I had on the ground, an outdoor solar node. So uh, let's talk a little bit more about what I installed. Welcome to MCOM Solutions, Jake here. So you're new to Mestastic or you've been in it for a little bit, but you're not getting quite the results you were looking for. You're not connecting with other nodes, whether those are people you know or trying to connect with just other users. I got some recommendations for you. I'm gonna lay out a build list here, show you a little bit about what I've done. You saw there in the beginning, obviously a little tip to what we're gonna be talking about. But I've been doing this for about two and a half years and I've had you know mixed results, do a lot of testing, try different things. And I think this setup is probably gonna be one of the easiest setups, especially for new users to get up and running and expand the range of their local mesh network. Now, <clears throat> there's gonna be some variations for your situation, depending on where you live, you know, you know, dense urban environment, a rural environment, a suburban environment, whatever it is, your situation may require some different parts to this. I'm gonna provide a parts list in the video, of course, there's gonna be Rockland affiliate links associated with those. And um, just some of my tips and what the results were, uh, did I get better results with the build that I just installed in my home in Washington State? Okay, so to start off, I chose the Rack Wireless Solar Enclosure, they're 91042. It is the larger, larger one of the two, it's the newest one they uh, have out on the market and it provides a larger solar panel. I do have their other one that's got the smaller, uh, smaller solar panel and I had mixed results from that. It's better suited for kind of more portable ops, you know, temporary setups. This one I think is much better based off of other YouTube creators, uh, is reviews on it, much better suited for a home node, something more permanent. <clears throat> so, some of the other key features of this enclosure and why I chose it is it already has the SMA connector. It is an RP SMA connector that is key uh, when you're picking the right cable. I will provide you know uh, what cable I used, but there is different cables out there. But Rockland can help you out getting you in the right direction there. Um, <clears throat> and then it, in addition, it has a power connector or a four-pin electrical connector on the other side. This is an IP67 rated case, so it is you know, capable of being mounted outdoors, exposed to weather, um, and you shouldn't have any problems. I haven't had any problems with the previous version I have. Um, that connector allows for external power and then I think two control cables. I'll probably won't ever use those cables for anything, maybe in the future if I get ambitious, but it could, the power side of it could be helpful if you do need uh, to provide additional sources of power or you don't want to put a battery within the enclosure because of your environment because uh, the lithium batteries don't do so well in the cold weather climates there is some other options there but uh, you could you know put your battery or your power source in a an environmentally controlled area and then run the, the uh, power wires to it which might help you in that situation. Um, so to top this all off, I mounted the WizBlock uh, Mestastic Starter Kit in it. The, of course, Rack Wireless WizBlock uh, Starter Kit. That comes with all the you know connectors and uh, screws and everything that you need to get up and running. I included a GPS module to that, and eventually I'll probably will install install edit. Uh, BLE environmental sensor in there, uh, but that, that'll be a future install. And it's super easy and quick to do though. And <clears throat> with the GPS, I did set a fixed position uh, and away from my home so that, you know, for privacy, uh, but not too far. But anyways, 
to power it, I installed a 3000 milliamp, uh, the uh, polymer lithium battery. Now that may not be sufficient. Time will tell on that and we'll see how it performs uh, in the future. But right now it's up and running. It was quick and easy to install. The antenna though I chose was the Alpha Networks 12 dBi directional Yagi. Now <clears throat> for your situation, for a lot of people's situations, an omnidirectional antenna might be best. If you're, especially if you're in a suburban or uh, urban type environment, if you're urban or suburban rural fringe or rural or whatever, directional might be what you're looking for. In my situation, because I do live outside of a small city and um, live in a heavily forested area and in a, in a draw, I only have a short window or you know a, a gap basically in terrain where I can point an antenna at the city and the I-5 corridor that runs there and through Washington State. So that was my goal is to be able to reach out there. My other setup that I'll just do show a quick video of or the link over here um, is a portable kind of setup on a tripod, metal tripod used for satellite TV dishes. And um, it had an omnidirectional, which was kind of a waste. I was only getting about two, uh, two and a half miles at most off that setup. We'll talk what I got off this setup as we get to the end here. To connect the antenna to the uh, enclosure, I used Rockland's three foot extension coaxial cable that it was a RP SMA male connector on one end because it's a female connector. Um, Actually, I think that's wrong. I think it was, yeah, either way, <laughs> I'll, I'll provide the right link. Um, and then um, into a type N connector, which was also male. Now, if you're able to play around with that, you might need to for different antenna configurations, or you can get an adapter like I did. And I included a uh, lightning arrestor that has a grounding cable running to a grounding stake off the pole that I'm using for this setup. Now I did wrap it with uh, rock tape, the waterproof, uh, it's a self-sealing um, silicone tape that I got from Rockland to help protect it from the weather because even though those connectors do have gaskets and stuff in them, water can get in there and cause uh, signal loss, you know, or additional signal loss. So <clears throat> the uh, that is a RFC low loss cable, I forgot to mention that. that Low loss helps you because with higher frequencies, you get more loss through the line, through the through the cable. So as short as cable as possible uh, for their low loss, the three foot is the shortest. They do have some other setups depending on what you're building. You may need to look into those for, if, like I said, the shorter, the better. So, but quality, go with quality. Um, so what were my results of this? My results were, good i was very happy so i got about three and a half miles direct no hops um, and i was only using my sense cap t1000e just hanging from the uh, sun visor in a vehicle so you still got the metal box you're in and blocking a lot of the signal but three and a half miles was great throughout this process while i was home i did uh, meet a new metastatic user on on the app uh, popped up, we I direct messaged him, he direct, and we started talking, we talked over several days before I left to come back to Albania. And um, he's a new user, new to it, but it's awesome because he's got three friends that are he's got interested and they're gonna buy set up. So that for me is great because it's gonna increase the local mesh network, improving range. Uh, which is what I've been hoping to achieve, you know, and be able to continue, you know, because it's going to give me for personal communications more range. And then, of course, meeting other uh, users is also cool. So there, that was good. I got over using a hop. I think I got four and a half miles. Like I said, limited testing done. I didn't have a whole lot of time. Uh, I was dedicating most of my time to spending with, with family. And, um, but... All in all, I was very happy with the results. So mounting as, I'll just talk that here a little bit here at the end. I already had a vertical pipe a pole that ran up at the back of my house, mounted to the peak 
and then to the ground using a uh, one and three eighths inch top rail chain link top rail pipes those are nice because they come in 10 foot lengths i think you can get them a shorter or two um, but they both one will slide in the other they're crimped down so they slide right into each other so you can add to them of course if you try to get too tall without any support you're going to have a lot <clears throat> you're going to have to have a lot of guide cables and um, it's just it's going to be pretty they're you know start to be pretty flimsy they're not super thick pipe um, <clears throat> so but that I already had that installed for a uh, cell uh, booster signal booster I didn't need that anymore because the cell company had changed or added a tower or something. They changed something and I, I get great coverage now at my home, but we didn't when we first moved in there. The pole though sits about 30 feet above the ground. So that gives me that kind of perfect, you know, line of sight. There is some trees in the way, but still getting four and a half miles of using a hop, three and a half miles of not. I'll probably try to make some adjustments next time I'm home and, you know, see how that works out for me. But with more users showing up in my local area, that might that alone might just increase my range without having to do too many crazy things to to my home solar setup. So I hope you found this useful. If you have questions, hit them. You know, hit me in the comments. You can join our Telegram group. Link will be below. Uh, the, you know, it's a Laura Mesh Communications Telegram group. So. Um, a lot of there's over 500 users over there so it's a good uh, place to ask questions and just meet other people and share your projects and whatnot i have a website link below social media links will be below if you found this very useful please hit that subscribe button you could buy me a coffee you you know hit the hit a like give me a thumbs up you whatever it is i appreciate the support uh, and stay tuned i have a ton of content coming up here in 2025 uh, I think you're going to be excited about some of them, so stay tuned for more emergency communications videos. Thanks for watching.